Uh, there's not a lot else going in the manufacturing area, although tourism is a larger business for sure. But if you're looking at manufacturing industries, the military is you know, a good one. So even countries that were formerly <coughs> neutral, as, such as Sweden, are junior partners of NATO. And in June of 2009, Sweden hosted war games called Loyal Arrow in its northern area, in its Arctic area. At very much to the dismay of the Sami people who said, this is just the time when the reindeer are running. And it was terrible destruction of their business and their environment. Now there are brave pacifists and veterans for peace, Iraq veterans against war and similar organizations, but not enough to turn the tide. People with no direct military connections often benefit from military contractor philanthropy, which funds every kind of organization and institution. Especially notable is the attention to minority organizations, such as Lockheed Martin's support for the NAACP. You may wonder why the civil rights organizations aren't more outspoken about war, which does deprive people of rights. Uh, in Keene, Timken Aerospace is a, a donor to the Mananak United Way. So we don't hear a, a lot of criticisms of, of that. And, of course, the economic impact of the military-industrial complex is a very important silencer. And it is an important part of our economy. It helps to keep the sagging economy afloat, even though we should note that government expenditures in this country for education, <coughs> health care, highways, etc., by state, local, and federal government far outweighs military expenditures. So people say, well, they spend more on the military than on education. That only refers to the federal contribution to education. So if you look at what is spent by all governments, healthcare is much larger than military, for example, and, uh, and education, all, all those other things. But, Although only about 7% 7 7 of the gross domestic product is for military industries, military funding still has a great impact because it's a growing sector. It's recession proof. It does not rely on consumer whims. And it's the only thing going in many areas of the country. The multiplier effect, subcontracting, corporate purchasing, and employee spending can perk up a large area. It's also ideally suited to Keynesian remedies because of its ready destruction and obsolescence. What isn't consumed in warfare or rusted out or donated to our friends still needs to be replaced by the slightly more lethal thing concocted in our research labs. Then military research is also very enticing to scientists because it's far out and challenging. For example, now they're inserting spy devices into insects. <laughs> and your scientists go for those kind of challenges. <coughs> All kinds, every, every kind of scientist can do all kinds of really cool things funded by the military. Again, I have sources on that if you're interested. And the military contracts make large profits for corporations, of course. They provide jobs for executives, for engineers, for scientists, for mechanics, for laborers, for architects, and others. They keep the manufacturing sector in this country alive. They reassure local governments that there will be some well-paying industries and customers for the real estate agents, the landscapers, restaurants, tap dancing schools, furniture shops, and yoga studios. Our representatives in Congress are well aware 
of these benefits to their districts. Often, of course, ordering military equipment to be produced that the military themselves say is totally useless. Or, or, it, or they've never been able to figure out how to make it work without defects. And they still keep funding those things. A great variety of businesses, non-governmental organizations, and local governments receive Department of Defense contracts. Everyone or a relative is getting a piece of the action. For example, in New Hampshire for fiscal year 2012, among the top contractors were BAE Systems, number one. And how many people have ever heard of BAE Systems? It's enormous. OK. Yeah. Um, number seven is Elbit Systems. That is an Israeli-owned military contractor. Number seven in New Hampshire. Number 10 is the Timken Company, which is a key aerospace weapons industry. BAE gets about 70% of all DOD, Department of Defense, contracts in New Hampshire. But there's still about 400 contractors entirely each year. And they range all over. Child care centers, landscapers, the Geneva Point Center, also has military contracts, local governments, carpenters. 39 contractors in key, and the largest ones was CNS Wholesale Grocers and Timken Aerospace. Of course, CNS gives a lot of donations for this and that, and the other thing, they support this and they support that. So it quiets people down. In addition to the Contracts, a lot of money goes from the Department of Defense to the state of New Hampshire for National Guard expenses, to Dartmouth College for research, and over a million to the Student Conservation Association for military medical research. I haven't looked up to find out what exactly they do, but you know, people know the Student Conservation <coughs> Association. Yeah. And of course, one result of all this is what's called the Christmas tree effect. There's something for almost everyone, which tends to buy assent to our military policy, however illegal, immoral, or irrational. Our country needs vast new industries that would employ scientists, mechanics, and others to improve the quality of life, repair our failing infrastructure, and clean up the environmental mess. But there's very little progress in this direction. 